It is really coming down out there. Two feet of snow and counting. It's officially a snow day in Boston, with the storm forcing school cancellations across the state. For you hockey fans, tonight's Bruins Florida Panthers game is still on for now. So kids, if you've got homework to do, but still want to catch some hockey, why not do both? Let's make this the best snow day ever. And away we go, transporting into a snow globe of Boston, a city rich in history with famous landmarks that make this place so unique. And right in the middle of it all, TD Garden, the site of tonight's matchup between the Boston Bruins and the Florida Panthers. We're going to watch some hockey, we're going to have some fun, and we're going to learn a little bit along the way how math and science are related to the game. So are you ready for the best snow day ever? We are. Let's do this. As, as you take a look at what Jeremy Swayman is working with, an NHL regulation net is four feet tall and six feet wide. So when Swayman's going post to post, he's covering six feet of ground, Andrew. 24 square feet, am I getting that math right? You are. How did I not score more goals with that much net to shoot on? We're talking a lot about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and how it relates to the game of hockey. And we can see how fast those players skate on the ice, Andrew. You know better than anybody. Well, they can zip around at crazy speed. Some of these skaters obviously going over 20 miles per hour easily, but some of the faster ones around 22, 23 miles per hour. It's just, just nuts. Just crazy how much ground they cover, too, uh, during a game. They cover between two and a half and three miles in a game, and that's pretty impressive considering they're giving it all on each and every shift they have, Andrew. Yeah, a shift in hockey lasts typically around 45 seconds before you're kind of trying to get a line change because you're really, really tired. You try sprinting for 45 seconds, that's tough. So <laughs> we're allowed to change players on the fly, as they call it in hockey, and that's why you'll see guys going to the bench and jumping on and jumping off and trying to stay fresh. Let's take a look at the point of view of the puck. Look at that angle, the puck sliding around the ice at top speeds. Adam, they freeze the pucks for the games, and that's because of friction. A frozen puck will move faster than a warm puck, obviously because it's on that ice surface. Yeah, friction, yep, and take a look. Uh, it's an invisible force that slows things down. Uh, warm objects have a lot of friction on ice surfaces. NHL pucks, to your point, Andrew, are actually frozen, making them hard and smooth. It creates less friction and allows them to move more smoothly on the ice. If the ice is not smooth, there is more friction with the puck. 108.8 .8 miles per hour, which is absolutely insane. How would you like to block a shot like that as a defenseman? You don't. You don't, Adam. <laughs> you get out of the way and say, that's what the goalies get paid for. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's why they wear all those pads. Absolutely. Well, the newest Bruins there, Henry Yoki Haru. Jeremy Swayman plays the puck behind his own net in that trapezoid area. One of the many uh, Different shapes on a hockey rink. You see the circles, obviously. The trapezoid behind the net where the goalie is actually allowed to handle the, the puck and obviously the rectangles uh, between the lines. That shot deflected and Jeremy Swayman coming up with the save. Twenty-four. Uh, Thirty-five. Ninety. Uh, Twenty-seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seventy-two. Twenty. 17, 36, 80, 81. Jeremy Swayman has faced three shots on net so far. He stopped two of them, and to calculate save percentage, you divide the number of saves uh, by the number of shots on goal. So Jeremy Swayman at the moment with a 667 save percentage. 
Average save percentage in the NHL is just about 90%. If you're up over 92%, you are considered elite. And so Jeremy Swayman, certainly one of the best in the business. As we take a look now at the shapes on the ice, and you can see uh, the face-off circle, uh, 30 feet in diameter. Diameter is how you measure a circle. It's the length of an invisible line drawn across the circle. Uh, in an NHL rink, uh, the face-off circles, as you see, 30 feet of diameter. The puck's diameter is three inches. I'll do the quick math. Is, uh, is the radius, I think, is half. That's right. So is that 1.5? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, the 1.5 inches, one and a half inches and 15 feet. The radius of a face-off circle. There are five face-off circles on the ice. Check. Check, check. <laughs> oh. We want you guys to keep one hand on the table. What kind of questions are there? STEM. That's like science. There's no actual buzz. Quick, dude, <laughs> dang! <laughs> Holy cow. Ah, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. Dude, that was yeah. fast. I, I went like this, I and started hands on the table, I was like, <laughs> he's sleeping. <laughs> One oh five. One eighty. Two fifty. Two twenty. Two twelve. Never would have guessed that. <laughs> Circle. And I guess the blue lines are kind of like rectangles, like wrong, long rectangles. Oh, buddy. I guess they are. <laughs> Technically. You take the amount of shots that they've faced and divide it by how many saves they've made. All the way around. <laughs> All the way around. I didn't know which way. We, I didn't know which way it would I go. I knew I was gonna say it wrong. Forty-eight <laughs> inches. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time limit here. All right. There's no time limit. Are you gonna get this wrong? <laughs> oh, come on. Twelve times four. Simple. Actually, play a 200 foot game. Oh, yeah, 200 feet. Yeah. 200 feet. <laughs> Seven and a half. Is that right? Come <laughs> on. <laughs> One eighth of the game. What'd you say? Seven and a half? Is it? An eighth of their ice time? Three minutes. Put your hand on the table. I'm smoking you. I'm letting you get a lead so that I can be I interested. Already in won. No. There's only nine questions. There's ten. There's an extra bonus one worth two points. Eight. Twelve. Nine. I had no idea. Do you know? Three and a half. I don't know. <laughs> 16. <laughs> Seven ounces. <laughs> Six ounces. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> well, that's me. He got a. Uh, 24. Watch out, buddy. It's <laughs> an easy one. For three points, really. <laughs> hey. Two. 
15. Pleasure. I loved all subjects, but I think uh, writing was my favorite. I love to write. This intermission is powered by Rapid7, the official cybersecurity partner of the Boston Bruins. My favorite subject was geography. I loved all subjects, but I think uh, writing was my favorite. I loved to write. Math, I always enjoyed like num or working with numbers. I liked math uh, back in the days. Math, I felt like it was pretty easy at first, so uh, yeah, I, I, that was the best I was the best at, and that's why I probably liked it. <laughs> As you take a look at uh, the coaching staff uh, wearing uh, the uh, tie, the black and gold tie, as we take a look at the rink dimensions now, Andrew. Well, 200 feet wide, and we got 85 feet across, so a lot of room out there to skate. But we talked about the size of some of these players, so sometimes it doesn't feel like there's that much room out there. And that's right, length times width is area. And the area of an NHL rink is 17,000 feet. And by the way, those pucks, they're made of rubber. They can bounce up to six feet high. Actually, vulcanized rubber. And vulcanization is mixing heated rubber with sulfur to improve strength and elasticity. There's another fun fact about hockey. By the way, in a typical NHL season, the players can skate up to 410 miles. That's the different distance from Boston to Baltimore, Maryland. School is an amazing place because you can meet so many new friends, obviously teachers being great mentors, uh, and just understanding you know, time management skills, all these skills, life skills that you're, you're going to use later on in life. And uh, I took school really seriously, you know, making sure I was finishing all my uh, homework on time and, and do whatever I needed to do to, to excel in the classroom because I knew that that would take care of, uh, you know, life skills more than anything and hockey would come uh, with that. Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest will stay at rest. And an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an external force. A great example of this is if a player were to pass a puck, it would be stationary before he would make the action of passing. A puck won't move unless I go up and stick handle it or, or move it. Before he passes, it's not moving, and then after he passes, it's moving in motion. Oh, look at you. Oh, look at that release. <laughs> Turn over. <laughs> <laughs> true or false? That That's me, yeah. That's me in the picture. Uh, true or false? It takes two inches of flex to break a stick. So false. False. Yeah. Uh, you can whip that thing to the ground. Yeah. Flex is really important because that's how, especially in a slap shot, you're generating that energy before the stick hits the puck. What you want to do is you want to flex so that you can actually get that energy built up in the stick. And when it comes across and releases from the ice, you're able to get that energy into the puck and the puck traveling as fast as possible. But Dr. Patrick, when is the true breaking point? Well, we don't know until we actually run that test. So if you can grab another stick, we'll load it in here and we'll see how much it takes to displace it. They got the old east in. This doesn't count. If, if we can reach the breaking point. All right, let's get to the fun Bart. stuff. There's an east in right there, though. So we are at an inch and a half of displacement. We have 330 pounds of load on this. <laughs> it's an old one. That's not accurate. No, that's, that's an old accurate. one, the new, the new Bowers. Yeah. <clears throat> when you were a kid and you needed a days. new stick and you'd yeah. whip it down to the ground. Yeah, that's you're trying to break right. it. Yeah. These guys don't know what they're Your talking about. Your buddy's sitting on it for you. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about here. <laughs> True or false, a puck can deform when it hits a hard surface. Does, uh, yeah, it's like does it count? Break. Like, yeah. Does that mean deform? I've seen pucks break in half. Yeah. I've Does it mean so just like times. warp? Breaking is deforming, right? 
Yeah. I would think so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah true. Yeah. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna load up the puck into this carrier, it's often called a sabot, and that's going to allow us to get the air behind the puck without the air blowing by the puck. It sits in there in a vertical position, and then we carefully load it into the cannon, close the cannon barrel up. We've got our high-speed camera set up here. We've got the air cannon ready to go. We're gonna get air into that system, and then we're gonna fire the shot. Firing. Yeah, see, that's what I didn't know if they were meaning. Yeah, the puck looks perfectly fine, but, but it's true. No, but it was like, we'll take it. Take it and run with it. Newton's second law of motion. The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force applied to it. An example of this is when I rip a slap shot. When I blast a slap shot. When I have a slap shot coming at me, pretty fast and the motion is uh, pretty powerful. So hopefully I have the ability to stop that motion. Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. An example of this is when I check someone into the boards. When I check somebody into the boards. When I have a scrum in front of my net, my D-men are gonna do their job of checking the other opponent out of my way so I can see the first shot. So their force going into that opponent is gonna allow me to see the shot. Man, what a great time this was here. That was absolutely incredible. You know, we learned a thing or two about math, science, Boston, all these different things, but we learned a thing or two about a comeback win. <laughs> that was incredible. The determination of the Bruins tonight was absolutely awesome. No, it was awesome. David Pasternak, Mason Lorai, Pavel Zaka, the goal scorers in the third period. And yes, we learned a lot about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and how it applies to the game of hockey, skate speed, puck speed, the dimensions of the rink, and we learned a lot about the history of Boston, so it was a good time. And I gotta say, man, you look great. You're very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I had an absolute blast. I love it here. I wanna come back to the Frog Pond one day and do more of this, and especially if we see a game like that. It was a pleasure being here today. Yeah, I was hoping you'd say I was very handsome too. I didn't get that back from me, but that's okay. I like how my beard looks. I, I can't, you can't. <laughs> and Blades, where's Blades at? Where's my guy Blades? Is he around? Where'd he, he go? Did he, he leave us? He's just not stopping cheering right next oh, to me here right. and well, just you know, going nuts on I night. love Blades. He's my guy. We had a great time. Thanks for joining us here on the best snow day ever. For Andrew Ferentz, I'm Adam Pellerin. We'll see you around the city of Boston.